The Strange Season 1 Finale, The Master. This was definitely a great season finale. I enjoyed a lot of the big moments in this episode, and I'm really excited for Season 2 to start off. Uh, one really big thing, of course, they confront the Master, and unfortunately, he does escape again, and it really, really sucked to see that happen. I was really hoping that they actually defeated the Master, but there was still just all the other vampires, and maybe, like, um you know, Ike Hurst would take over, there would just be like some sort of weird crazy power play and someone else would try to take over as the master and sort of rise to power or something weird like that. But unfortunately the master does escape in this episode. It was a really cool fight scene that they had and it kind of sucked. I wish they kind of played it differently because I feel like they still had the chance to kill them or kill the master, but they were kind of just standing there when he wasn't completely, you know, bursting into flames and stuff and melting or whatever however you want to look at it you know i feel like he still had the chance but they kind of let him escape and it was interesting to see i mean he's clearly hurt by fire a lot but it's not nearly enough to stop him from saving himself like it hurts like crazy you could clearly tell that but if it's good if it comes to like burning alive for a little bit compared to being you know decapitated he's gonna jump out of a window and get set on fire or at least for a little bit he's gonna have his skin burn and then he's gonna take off but it was a pretty great scene i enjoyed it um like i said the fight was pretty cool the way they did it when he like jumped out the window and then he kind of called everyone else like come to me the way they showed that i really enjoyed because they made it because they actually just rewound the footage you could easily tell that they filmed the people coming in and then they just rewound that footage to have them leaving out and it looked really weird and but it, it looked weird in a good way it looked weird and sort of creepy too and like you could tell it was rewound footage but i actually enjoyed the way they did it because it just it made it look weirder and it made it a little bit creepier so i actually thought that was really cool uh the actual fight itself i thought was pretty interesting fortunately no one got hurt i was really glad um fett didn't get hurt because he was the only one who really looked like he was about to when he was grabbing on the eye curse and he was like flipping him around and stuff i thought he was like I don't know, bite him or, like, scratch him and then, like, maybe scratch himself or, like, try to put a worm in him. But, fortunately, everyone does end up escaping. Um, I cursed and Ildred, I, or if that's how you pronounce his name, I can't really remember. But they kind of, like, teamed up as a, you know, an actual evil duo in this episode. And, you know, Ildred's kind of lost his, um, lost the, like, one person who was actually helping him out. So, I, want, I can't wait to see that guy come back in season two and what he's going to be doing because i feel like he he'll either run into gus who's now working for the masters or he'll run into like the other like basically the group so he'll he'll run into one of those two things and considering he met with fed and he knows uh the hacker he'll probably run into them and he'll kind of join the team but it would be really cool if he ended up working with gus too and then they ha they kind of team up to kind of take out the master so you know, I'm excited to see what he does, but Eldritch and Ikehurst were definitely, like, the evil duo in this episode, and they went to talk to the woman, and they're outside and stuff, and they're just talking, and it was like, oh, man, I thought he, like, he must have really convinced her of something, and then he just tosses her right off the balcony, and it's like, I did not see that coming, he just tosses her off the balcony, and then, you know, that, of course, made the other guy crap his pants, so he's <laughs> going along with whatever they want him to so that he doesn't get tossed off a building but i enjoyed that and now he's kind of shown his loyalty he knows he's not immortal but he's i mean you he threw a woman off a balcony so he's kind of stepping up the evil ladder he's kind of proven that even without having immortality he's going to do what it takes to get immortality because he's loyal to the master so that was really something to see and it was pretty cool i don't know how much further that's really going to go i'm sure he'll probably end up getting immortality it might not be next season it might be a bit down the line but i thought that was really cool to actually see him like he's alive and healthy so he was actually able to go out and do like crazy evil things and this was the first time we actually got to see it so i want to see more of that in season two for sure but i enjoyed that of course gus uh being taken in i guess by the rogues and the masters we learned that the master himself was a part of this group it used to be i guess a quartet and now he kind of took off and did his own thing because i guess he just wants to rule and for whatever reason there was an ancient truce but he decided to break it and kind of take over the human world so i'd love to get more backstory on that and what the truce really is 
where the masters really came from how they got started how vampires just came to be if it's just like you know poof they exist or they've always existed or you know crazy magic or something like that because considering it's you know vampires and stuff i wouldn't you know they haven't shown anything like that but i wouldn't rule out magic as a possible cause they haven't like i said really gotten into anything like that it's really just vampires as a virus but you know i'd love to get their backstory what they're doing um they're the masters are currently sleeping so that's interesting to see like they're just in a state of sleep i guess that's why all the blood was on the ground they kind of just drained them to make them really weak and they didn't they kind of just you know passed out and they left them that way but you know i'm excited to see what happens with gus and what they do to help i guess train him really so that he can take on the armies but i really enjoyed this episode it was cool to see the big fight um like a couple things that caught my attention like aside from the master escaping and i felt like they still could have got him there were two things i thought were pretty weird one was like the latch that they had in like the little sewer thing even though i like i could easily see the door and the sewers and stuff still connecting the two buildings i thought it was really weird that like the string was still there like it, it could have easily been used but when they went into the thing you could clearly tell it's just the sewer like no one in that building was actually using that sewer so it seemed so weird that the string was still there like it didn't just wither away after 90 plus years like it didn't just you know just stop working or anything it's just a 90 year old string that still works i thought that was kind of weird but you know like it was just that and that was really it i mean that and um they were talking about how the tv wasn't working and they kind of they before they all left to go take on the master and stuff there's a part when F gives his son the sword, which I thought was a really cool scene. It was a really great scene when it was like a nice sort of advancing moment for his son because all the crap they've been going through, F didn't want to really put his son in front of that, but he had no choice at this point. So I enjoyed that scene. But in the background, you could clearly hear the television, and I thought that they were going to talk about that, and they would say like, oh you know these are the effects because this was of course after the woman was tossed off the building so it would be like everything they did using the emergency broadcast system it didn't actually work because they threw that woman off so now they kind of control everything they the way they want to and they would kind of brand f as a criminal again and i thought they were going to talk about that but they kind of skipped over it. and it could easily be a deleted scene i feel like it's something that you know you can hear it in the background they just did we didn't get to see it on tv i feel like it probably is a deleted scene but that was something they skipped over in the episode and i really wanted to see that because you can hear them say f's name like they they said like f uh good weather from the cdc and stuff and you could hear some words on the tv and that was a big deal in the beginning of the episode when none of the channels were on so you know i was hoping we get some explanation on that but they kind of skipped over and like i said it could be a deleted scene they just all the stuff they had in there was important so you know sometimes you just got to pick and choose what you're going to cut out but that was something i did notice because you could hear the tv on in the background now um of course the end of this episode was kind of messed up i knew that was going to happen they went back to the house and kelly showed up and that kind of sucked and she didn't get killed in this episode she got shot in the arm so she's still there for the master to use like he's still going to use her in season two and possibly beyond i i doubt i kind of doubt that she'll make it past season two i feel like they're gonna have a confrontation and f's just gonna have to kill her or maybe even her son would i thought that might be how it would go down where f would try to kill her but something would happen to him and then his son would actually have to do it but she survived this she only got hit in the arm so once that happened she took off and i guess the master you know because he can see through all the creatures he's like okay she got hit so he's he's strong enough to attack her even though he doesn't want to he's strong enough to do what he has to so the master kind of called her back to use her for later but i thought that was a really good scene now his son knows so it was just another moment where his son was once again just brought further into everything that's going on and of course f himself he had his suspicions but then he officially knew like he saw her and it wasn't just like this is very very likely but i'm gonna keep my hopes up this was a fact like she's turned and there's nothing i can do now so it was a really good scene even for him even though he had his suspicions 
we get to see his reaction when he actually saw her because there was no hope after seeing the proof in front of his face. So it was a great scene, a uh, great finale, and, you know, things are not exactly great for them. They're almost back where they started, but they've made two attempts. They've gotten close to the master. They found out that sunlight isn't really the be-all, end-all solution, so now they're going to have to find something else. And I feel like that's what's really going to lead them into Gus and the rogues and how they have their own solution as to what will officially take down the master. But I'm excited for season two. Love this episode. Of course, comment below. Let me know what you guys thought about it, your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And what did you guys think about season one? Did you enjoy the show? Are you going to keep watching it into season two? Or did this finale kind of lose you and you don't really care about season two anymore? Comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.